Greetings, and welcome again to Call of Cthulhu, the official adaptation of Chaosium's tabletop RPG from Focus Home Interactive and Cyanide Studio. Last time, we showed you some of the ominous beginnings of Edward Pierce's adventure. Today, we're going to delve deeper along the path of madness. Please, I don't want him to find me. The early stages of the investigation already made it clear that this is no ordinary case. However, as Pierce continues his search for the terrible truth, he will be plunged to the brink of insanity, confronted with horrifying visions, zealous cultists, and perhaps even the old ones themselves. But the earth will resound to your cries. Many of the foes that Pierce encounters on Darkwater Island are beyond human comprehension and offering up any physical fight will most likely be futile. Most of the time, you will need to rely on other skills such as speech, medicine, and knowledge of the occult, if only to delay the inevitability of crossing such cosmic horrors. Subterfuge is also an option. While escaping the gaze of the Great Dreamer is an impossibility, more mortal beings are not so all-seeing. You are gifted indeed. Bring me more sacred into the kingdom of the earth. Stealth will sometimes be the best way to evade a terrible fate, though this is made harder by Pierce's crippling fear of the dark and small spaces. Every grim vision and traumatic sight has the potential to reduce Pierce's sanity. Skirting the lines between sanity and madness is a certainty in Call of Cthulhu. As it lessens, Pierce's ability to draw logical conclusions will become less reliable, and his perception of reality will change. The Darkwater investigation will push Pierce beyond his physical and mental limits, as he's drawn ever closer to the domain of the Great Dreamer. I hate whiskey. I'll see you in my dream. Oh. 